Do you know when you're like thinking of an introduction and you don't really know where to start? Because you have that, I, I said to him when he first walked in, like, yo, this is like a nostalgia moment for me, but he probably gets it all the time. And apparently he's actually family to represent radio, to be honest. He's been here numerous of times and I'm just happy to have him here in the building. Swiss! How you doing, my brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Not too bad, not too bad. I can't hear myself. Can't you? Am I supposed to hear myself? I mean, I can hear you loud and clear. Okay. So yeah, you're definitely coming oh, through the channel. Ones. Thank you very much. Hello? All good. Yeah. One, two, one, two, yeah. I can you can hear yourself. Bit, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Turn, um, turn me up a little bit, man. Turn up my headphones. <laughs> I always wanted to say that. Turn me up. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. I, I feel like on. every rapper starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn start. up the headphones. You know, like they heard Jay Z say it, so everyone wants to say it. Yeah. Everyone wants to say it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, how you been, man? How's things? I've been alright, you know. I've yeah. been alright. Um, mentally, physically, spiritually, I've just been trying to keep myself on on point. You know, during this whole period since March. Yeah. Uh, COVID and the pandemic. Um, I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, definitely wanted to start. Well, obviously the real reason why we even brought you down there was the basis of Black Pound Day. Yeah. Uh, celebrating Black History Month. Obviously, I don't feel like it should only be consoled to one month, but because we are in that month right now, mm -hmm. I thought it was always good to kind of reach out to people who are doing things for the community, of the community, and just trying to expand. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Black Pound Day was one of those things because I remember, obviously, at the BLM, then obviously that whole period, and then Black Pound Day dropped mm -hmm. on June the 27th, I believe. Yeah, June 27th. Yeah, and that was the first one, and I feel like we're, we're on to our sixth one now. No, we're going on to our fifth. Fifth one? Yeah. That should be um, the 7th of November, right? Yeah, 7th, yeah. 7th yeah. of November. Yeah. So what's been the surge? Um, how has it been? Is it like it's taken a life of its own? So just kind of explain to us the process and what kind of made you, just in case people that may not know, yeah. what made you start the Black Pound Day? Yeah, so I started Black Pound Day. It was an idea I had several years ago. I say usually about 12 to 15 because I knew it was before my son was born and my son's 11. Okay. So it was an idea I had back then. And just I was just talking in the hood with like my, my Bridget's older brother about lots of things and um you know pertaining to solutions for the black community and that's the idea that i came up with back then mm -hmm. and it was a very strong surge in inspirational thought back then as it was now uh, or recently you know with what happened after the marches so when uh, in the aftermath of george floyd when i saw people marching in the middle of our city um i was kind of in my zen mode um because i was staying away from social media and I was just pouring back into myself. Yeah. So at that moment, I was in between st the stimulus and response that most people were re responding to in terms of the situation. And I felt that that gave me several moments of clarity for the Black Pound Day idea to come back through mm -hmm. and for me to do something productive that would come out of the marches. So instead of putting your fists in the air, which is a lovely symbolic support of emotion, we need more sustainable outcomes for yeah. our community. So I say, put your fists in your pocket become an economic uh, revolutionist and, <laughs> and spend on, on black businesses. And since you've said that, what has been the growth since back, 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 uh, back We've managed day? to raise about 100,000 in receipts. I've got okay. a receipts function on the website, uh, blackpoundday.uk, where when you do buy black, you could go up there and upload your receipt. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, uh, and we know that that's not a true um, reflection. reflection of, you know, all the people that are involved in yeah. Black Pound Day. It's just the ones that are taking part in that. Um, and businesses have told me that, you know, they've sold out on the day, basically. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's that's basically the main feedback. Like, I've sold out, I've sold out, I've sold out. That is a um, great feeling, man. You know, and it went in waves as well. The first one, obviously, was the big hype. Yeah. Sky News, BBC, Channel 5, um, number one trending on Twitter on Armed Forces Day. I don't say that to dig anyone in the side. It's just giving you a kind of idea, a comparative idea. Yeah. Um, that was in, in Gay Pride Month as well, or week. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know... Came very, with the facts <laughs> today. Came with the facts. Very, very, very big. Um, you know, at, at, on the first day, we had about 15,000 on the hashtag on Instagram. We're mm -hmm. up to like almost probably 55,000 now. Wow. Um, and there's statistical reasons. Since you speak about facts, you know, there's a 3.2 billion... Um, pay gap between whites and ethnic minorities in this country mm. if you're a black woman you're the least um, funded in the society black businesses uh, give 32 25 to 32 billion per year to the uk economy but yet we get one percent um funding from venture capitalists mm. um if you're black or asian and you uh, apply for a job uh, because of your surname you know you're getting overlooked you have to send in your cv at least three times if you're black and you go to some of the most prestigious universities in the country um, you're not you're not um, getting a job that is equivalent to your qualification up to two years after you finish your degree. Wow. So um, those are the type of disparities that we're being affected by. So um, Black Pound Day is something that, you know, is a self um, self producing solution mm -hmm. that we have for our community, because whenever the gov government put policies 
um, forward, they're not. They're very general. Mm. They're not specific. They're not race specific. But we're going through a race specific type of discrimination. Mm. So we need solutions that are race specific. So this is something that has been produced by myself for our community that is evidently, you know, uh, doing well for ourselves. Yeah. Um. We we see. Obviously, you came here with the facts. We see Black Pound Day on social media, how well it's doing. And obviously, you had that big, massive pop when you first announced it, mm. um, June 27. And obviously, everyone was flooding it on that day. Mm. Um, what was, What's the day-to-day like running Black Pound Day? What's the difficulties you kind of faced on a day-to-day as a businessman? Uh, that's, good to, that's a good question. Um, running the website, dealing with running the website, because obviously, it was something that I wasn't supposed to do, bro, <laughs> in terms of I didn't have a plan to do. It came as a response to what was going on. Mm. So, first of all, you know, I was just like, you know what, this needs to be done. Black Pound Day, boom. Put the message out there. Getting everyone to understand the reason and uh, the commitment that it takes to make this happen. Because it's not a self-endeavour, it's a community endeavour. Mm-hmm. So people need to understand that you as a person of the community need to be involved mm-hmm. in order to get you to understand that that's a very hard thing to do. So I needed to get um, celebrities involved, people that were influencers for my industry. Yeah. So I DM'd a lot of people. Obviously, I got a lot of respect in my industry because of the work that I put in from Soul Solid and as an individual artist. So I had a lot of um, people get involved from Rich 32, Rich 32, sorry, to Fuse ODG, Don Strapsy, mm-hmm. Hacks, the, uh, um, Man Like Hacks, Steve O the Madman. Uh, that wasn't easy, but you know that that was the first kind of point of of uh, getting it out there. Mm-hmm. And then after that, people were like, where do we buy from though? Like, we need somewhere to buy from. So before that first day, we had to pull together, you know, <laughs> a website. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I had to put a call out to my. Well, people started DMing me from DMing me from all over the place. Swiss, I have these skills. What can I do for you? It was just a flood, as you can imagine. It was yeah. crazy. So just organizing my DMs and making sure that I sifted through the right people to be able to help me. Um, because I said it wasn't something that I set out to do. So I needed community help, you understand? Yeah. Um, so yeah, people came forward organizing that, getting the website together. All of that was a big, it was really hard <laughs> to do that. And Can then, imagine. you know, going forward, just maintaining that website, um, getting the shop, um, getting the shop, the online shop going as we are doing at the moment. Uh, just day to day running that website bro because people are looking to us as a brand now to um, supply their consumer needs or to point them towards whatever wherever wherever and whatever they need to spend black do you know what I'm saying or well, not whatever but wherever they need to spend black so just that cool sort of day to day thing running the social media making sure we're pe- keeping people engaged mm-hmm. and just keeping the right people in the team and we're only four months in so it's been a hard process but we're we're, we're kind of shaping and molding ourselves towards doing good with that yeah um we're going to talk about the music bit of a long answer yeah, yeah it's a long answer but i still love it i love <laughs> yeah, it anyway it's a, it's a big question so. <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah so you came with the facts again um we're going to get into your music career and we're going to get into the plans of obviously making this a national day i remember i read somewhere on um, budsfield and other interviews whilst doing my research that that's yeah. something that you that was one of the targets that you wanted to kind of do and obviously get into mainstream shops like sainsbury's and tesco's we're yeah. going to talk about that yeah but first I'm going to go back to that nostalgia moment. Yes, yes. So, yes, yes let's play Swiss Cry here on Represent Radio. Oh, yo, it's JBZ right now. We're locked in with Samuel Any. Turn it up. Swiss Cry. Yes. Come over. Popcorn. Georgia Smith here on Represent Radio 107.3 FM. You're locked into Samuel Any right now. And if you're just tuning in, my special guest is here. Swiss. How you doing, Black my Pound Day. How you doing, All sir? All good, man. Can I just say, like, before you start. Yeah. So, um, Cry is from um, p- an album called Pain and Music that yes. I put out in 2005. Mm-hmm. And I recently recently put out an album this year during the pandemic called Isolation of Music. Oh, yeah. Was so that was from Pain and Music. This yeah. is Isolation of Music that I'm talking about now. Came out in, I think, well, you said you're going to talk about it. So yeah. No, that's fine. Um, I really wanted to ask you from mm. the time that music was made then to the time that music is made now with your new album just dropped. Okay. Um, what was it that you found different in making the time frame? Because obviously the audience that you had back then have yeah. now grown. Yeah. So was was it something that you was conscious about making this album to kind of appeal to a, a younger audience? Not necessarily, no. Um, I've always been a very... Um, a ba- I've always kept a balance between serious and fun music. Mm-hmm. So if you listen to the album, most people know Cry, Broken Silence, like yeah. the very socially conscious tunes that I've done. But I've also got some people that are true Swiss friends know that I've got a good balance of fun and serious music. So it's the same with this album, you know, and I'm very lyrical as well. If you heard my, my daily Duppy, Graham Daily, mm. uh, very li- lyrical and keep up with the times when it comes to my lyricism. 
You understand? So I'm not one of those rappers that's going to be like, not going to be able to appeal <laughs> lyrically or musically to. It's just if you've got a, lis a listener music air, you'll be able to um, to hear what you like. Yeah. I guess. And obviously if it's visible as well. Because yeah. I'm not saying, so I'm doing my stuff independent. So it's a bit different. I've got a, a scream a bit louder than those that are saying. You get me? So, yeah. 15 years on, it's crazy how that song is still affecting today and age and yeah yeah how it's yeah. still relevant, relevant today. Yeah, yeah and in a sense it kind of makes you look back and wonder like what actually has changed for us as black people in this community in this in this city exactly what has changed you know there's little nuances that has changed but in terms of fundamental changes i'm not sure yeah, yeah. it's something that we're still try, trying to you know yeah. do yeah so i've gone from cry to like black pound day because yeah. we're still facing like some of the same issues that we did back then and as i said like between 12 and 15 years ago was when I came up with the idea. There's yeah. a reason for that. And then I brought it back today. So it kind of shows that, you know, it's something that was needed back then as well as now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Not even to get all spiritual and stuff, but mm. do you feel like you're walking in your purpose? I feel like I am, definitely. Yeah, I feel like I'm very much connected. I mean, why wouldn't we get spiritual? There's nothing wrong with being spiritual. There's not even. <laughs> We're living <laughs> a spir <laughs> We're spiritual beings having a physical experience, you know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I do feel like I'm living in my purpose. And, you know, my consistency kind of shows that. And um, the fact that everything has come back full circle with producing Black Pound Day kind of shows that as well. And it's just been really beautiful, bro. You know, nothing can stop a, a good idea when the timing is right, as they say. You know, that's not the way the quote goes, but something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, so a good idea, meeting the right time has the best impact ever. And that's what um, Black Pound Day has been able to do. And it, I guess it does show that I'm walking in my purpose, yeah. Do you still speak to Sharifa? Are you, you know still what? Cool? No, do you know what? I haven't spoken <laughs> to Sharifa. We're still cool. Don't get me yeah, wrong. Like, yeah. We're still good. But I haven't spoken to Sharifa in years. She's got yeah. a child right now. I've had children since then too. Yeah. But you know what? Um, even back then, it wasn't like we was buddy-buddy. It was a case of... Um, sh uh, I was working with Shabs from Soul Solid at the time. Mm. And his older brother was managing Sharifa. And she just had the right voice for the track at the time. And she was working on her own stuff. Mm. She even done her own version of Cry, mm -hmm. which people ain't really heard. But um, yeah, so we're, we're as cool as we was back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we haven't fell out or nothing like that. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm glad you cleared that up. Because yeah, yeah, that's yeah, something yeah. I want to know. And yeah, I'm sure yeah, a lot yeah. of people yeah, wanted yeah, to know definitely. as well. And I think at that time, you weren't really seeing black women being represented in UK hip hop music exactly. like that either. You know, from a singer's perspective. You know, you had Estelle, the rapper. I know Estelle done a bit of singing as well. But just in terms of that grime generation, I guess. Yeah. You weren't really seeing too much um, black females having that type of representation with a soulful voice from a, a, a younger generation. Yeah. So I'm glad that I uh, we were able to represent that at that time as well. For sure. And leading the way as well. Yeah. Um, two, just two more questions. Mm -hmm. Do your children understand what you're trying to do? Oh, definitely. My daughter's eight years old and she was like, Daddy, like, you're such a good dad. You know, you're, yeah. you're tackling racism. Um, at know, eight years old, she, at I mean, eight years old, bro. Like she's very <laughs> articulate. Yeah, she's like, you know, your 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 Black Panda has been created so that you can try to tackle and stop racism. Uh, your father, you do your music, you're doing so much things at one time, and I'm so proud of you. And I was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you're just like, <laughs> did that bring a tear to you? Everything, like, do you know what I'm saying? I, just, I was just so surprised how articulate she was, and she came out of it out the blue. Like, she's very aware of what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great, man. Anyway, That's great yeah. to see. Um, yeah. Making Black Pound Day a national day. Where are we with that? Yeah, What's, um, what, how's the plans? How's that going? Do you know what? It's still a, it's still a, just a, a good idea, mm -hmm. but it's something that I want to implement at some point. Um, as you said, you know, or as you asked, you know, what's the day to day like? At the moment, it's very challenging because I'm doing interviews. I'm trying to make sure that I respond to the local interviews like mm -hmm. yourself, mm -hmm. as well as do interviews for like, you know, the ITVs and the BBCs and that because I don't want it to be an imbalance. So yeah. I've got so many people that I have to kind of put myself forward for day to day, whether it's interviews, whether it's uh, um, uh, what, uh, what's the what's the meeting? Articles. The, the, the meetings, the meetings on, on, on Zoom. They called? Zoom meetings. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Zoom. <laughs> the, Zoom, the Zoom meetings, you know. Zoom meetings, yeah. The Zoom meetings, the team meetings, the, 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 the um, the media meetings and yeah. there's so much things that are just coming all at once obviously because you know it, it's, 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 it's one of the big ideas that's come off the back of what happened with George Floyd and the protest yeah. so a lot of attention's on it so I'm being pulled left right and centre but just trying to do as best as I can yeah. to meet the needs of, of the people so. if there's any questions 
for Swiss, please get at me on the social media as well. I'll represent all my personal own as well at Samuel Any underscore on Twitter and at Samuel Any here on Instagram. Now we have a game that we haven't played in a while that we're going to play real soon, shortly after this song. So make sure you stick around. Here's Tion Wayne, Dutch Avelli, Stormzy, I don't know, on Represent. You mentioned your album. Yeah, you Isolation that. of Music. It's out now on Bandcamp. Isolation of Music, mm. out now on Bandcamp. 17 track album. Up 17 to, tracks. 17 songs, yeah. 17 tracks, so. What inspires you to still make music? Um, uh, lyric, I love lyricism. Yeah. I love lyricism. I love keeping at the forefront of lyricism. So there's that, you know. I'm always going to think I'm one of the, the top lyricists in the country. So that. Um... And just speaking, speaking my truth, man. Mm. I guess speaking my truth. And um, there's always there's an urge. There's just an urge to. I've got so many songs in me, bro. Yeah. You understand? There's so many, so many levels of songs, and not just um, hip hop. You know, I, I make garage as well. Yeah. House, R and B. So I've got a lot in me, man. So anytime I get a chance to sit down, whether I'm listening to music, the radio, um, music at home. Um, they, I'm always coming up with ideas. I'm just at that point now where I'm just an idea machine. Yeah. So when you dropped when you dropped the album, was there like a target for you that I want to reach this amount of following? I want to reach this amount of listeners. Um, I want this amount of people to dance. Was there like what? a target? At the time, for you? No, there wasn't. You know, it kind of because I wasn't supposed to put it out when I did. Okay. You no, know, we hit the pandemic, and I was like, this is a great chance for me to put this album out now. Let me finish up the rest of these songs. I'll frame it around the the what's happening. I call it isolation of music first album was playing the music and everyone's at home mm. i make the type of music that you can list, sit down and listen to so that's why it was a good time for me to put it out and i just put it out i didn't really have any expectations because of where we was in society at the time yeah you know and, I, and i'm independent as i said before so i just put it out and whoever was to listen to it at that time would get it and whoever wouldn't wouldn't all right cool yeah. my last question before we get into the game what has 2020 shown you as a Swiss, the uh, f- founder of Black Pound Day, Pound father, father, do you know what I mean? A musician, artist, rapper, what has 2020 shown you and how would you say your take on 2020 has been? Expect the unexpected and, um, you know, plan, but don't don't stick too hard to them, you know? Don't have expectations of, from your plans because anything can happen. Yeah. Be fluid, take care of your health at all times, appreciate the ones that you love, um, don't be scared to take ideas off the back burner and bring them forward when necessary. Mm. Um, make sure you have some money saved. Support, That's a key. Yeah, make sure That's you have some money, some money saved. Yeah. They say three times the amount that you earn, if you can. Um, support your community. Because, you know, as a black community, it's a good thing that Black Pound Day came when it did. Yeah. Because as a black community, we need to be able to isolate ourselves um, in terms of wrap ourselves around our own wealth in times of need because we're the most affected by COVID-19 financially, health-wise, and, uh, you know, generally in most areas of society. Mm. So, you know, the more that we can have an economic base to support us in good times and in times of need, Mm -hmm. then the better we will be as a community because we won't be losing people at at the fastest rate in the country. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, because we only make up like 4 to 6% of the country anyway. Yeah. And we're, we're losing the most lives. That, that dynamic is Doesn't crazy. make sense. Doesn't make sense. So, so yeah, all of that list, man. I hope you wrote that down. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's recorded, bro. So we can listen back to this over and over again. Okay. This You can catch this interview again if you in case you missed it. But you can catch the interview up on Represent Mixed Cloud. And it'll be up later on on my YouTube as well. Um, so make sure you stick around for that. Can but I just y- say, sorry, before you cut. Go on. So follow us on social media, BPD yeah. Official on, on Instagram. Um, Black Pound Day on Twitter. You can follow me on on Instagram, SwissWorld underscore. And make sure if you want to buy black that you uh, look up uh, blackpoundday.uk. There's a plethora of directories out there, but that's my one. Yeah. yeah? That's our one. (laughs) (laughs) Swiss came ready. He came ready for today, man. Um, Maya, are you ready? All right, cool. It's guess that track. We haven't played this in a while. So we thought we'll bring this back before we introduce some new games heading to the last two months of the year. And um, yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited. Let's see how Swiss fares. Guess that track. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready, let's go. You have to say it? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah Kanye through the wire. <laughs> <laughs> that was an easy one, Liv. Easy one, yeah. That was a very easy one. Yeah. Light, start so off light and then we go through. All right, cool. Light, we go through light, that one. Light, light, light. I feel like he's gonna ace this. 
Okay. I feel like there's not going to be a song on there that you wouldn't know. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah? Yeah. All right, cool. Okay. Yeah, this is Usher. But this sounds like um, like a Bryson Tiller. Oh, Future Anthem Beats Reproduction. Okay. Yeah. Usher. We'll, do you know what? We'll give you half a point. It's actually Summer Walker Summer featuring Walker. Usher. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I knew it. Like, so, yeah. And I've heard this, you know, but I haven't listened to the album enough okay. to be like, that's what it is. Okay, so yeah. I apologise. But it yeah. is It is a sample yeah, of Usher's. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So yeah. we'll give you a half a point on that one. Right, no problem. Producer Maya, next song. That's a banger, by the way. Yeah, yeah, banger. yeah, yeah, banger. Yeah, that whole album. Kill him with it, 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 kill him with it. One of the most diverse artists of the game. Lethal. Yeah. I'm glad she got yeah, that from. Yeah. Just for that small When I heard distortion, and then you said that, yeah, yeah. And I was like, obviously, yeah. Because that's like the best description for Lethal Wizard. Yeah, he's he's always very versatile. Very, very versatile. versatile. Yeah. He can walk into any kind of realm. Mm. That's Lethal for you. Yeah, but yeah, quick, man. Nice and easy. Next one. What's the song called, though? Festus Gang. Festus Gang. That's yeah, it, yeah, that's the one. I hope you're participating in the car or at home. Uh, if you got Festus Gang uh, wrong, I don't know. This is a. Uh, Ah oh, man, this is old. Yes, school. I know, I know it though. It's um, oh, is De La Soul. Is it De La Soul? Mm-hmm. No, hold on, hold on. No, it's not De La Soul. This is old school, bro. Nineties. Yeah, I know, I know, bro. Ain't it De La Soul? Who is it then? I mean, I, I think Agent's coming Agent's in here because he knows. <laughs> I know he knows Agent's it, but he can't help it. <laughs> hold on. The lead artist. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay. This is um, Tribe Called Quest. Yes. Yes, this is Tribe Called Quest. But what's the name of the song? Um, what is the name of the song? I can't remember the name of the song. I can't remember the name. I'm sorry. What is it? Can I Kick It? Can I Kick It? Can I Kick It? Can I, I was going to say that as well, you know. <laughs> That's the line that came to me. Kick It. Yes, you can. Can I Kick It? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we got two more. Right, we got go, two more. Man, let's go. Another old school song. Marvin Gaye, what's going on? Bro. Do you know, he said that so effortlessly. Can you say that again, just in case we couldn't hear you? Marvin Gaye, what's going on? <laughs> Effortless. Come on, bro, man. Come on. That's Marvin now. You see this one, yeah? You should know this one. All right. I'll be surprised if you get it wrong. Don't, don't make it like 21 seconds or something. No, 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 no. I weren't going to do that. We made sure that we weren't going to cover that. <laughs> Imagine if we did, though. And I was like, how can you not know your own song? But um, yeah, go ahead. Lauren Hill. Legend. One of the best albums, period. Timeless. They even have a show on TV called this. Is it? Yeah. There's a show on TV called this, literally. Uh, There's I a don't show watch TV, bro. I don't <laughs> watch TV. Uh, um, hold on. Simon Cowell's one of the judges. Oh. It's one of those so, um, yeah. TV shows that gives artists a platform to showcase their skills, and if they win, they get get a deal at the end of the day. But it's done very, very big. It's not pop idol, I'll say that. Yeah, Britain's Got Talent. Not that one either. Oh. I'm thinking, hold on. <laughs> There's another one. Oh. There's another Simon one. Cowell. X Factor. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is this tune? Uh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm a Laurie fan. But yeah. Names don't always stick. Yeah. Me. Don't always stick. Yeah. How? X Factor. Yes, of course. I was like, Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. I was yeah, definitely yeah, dropping yeah, the yeah, hits. Yeah, yeah, I was definitely yeah, dropping X-Factor, the hits. Yeah, yeah. How inspirational is Lauren Hill, man? Oh, so inspirational. She was the reason why, or big, big reason why I was able to go as deep as I did with Cry. Mm. And it was the. Um, the, the the second album that she did the live album um see my mind's just going blank now so um, the second album's called unplugged and, and she done it on mtv and she was so open she was there with her guitar she had her lyrics in front of her and she just uh gave you her story through her career and her love life and she had tunes in between giving that story and a small audience very intimate and i'd never seen anything like that before 
and you know the depth that she went to allowed me to go to a, 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 a certain depth within myself and cry was the result of of listening to that album i'm not gonna lie bro like most definitely yeah yeah that song there so black pound day he's giving you the socials he's giving you everything that you need to know about first it. first saturday of every month is yep. black pound day yep and the next one is the 7th of november it is and um thank you so much for coming through thank you very much for appreciate having you me. Once again, appreciate yes, everything yes, that you yes, do. Yes. And um, yeah, man, Swiss. Big up the Represent family, man. Thanks for having me. Of course. Here's Leave If You Wanna on Represent.